Okay, and now we're gonna do the second part of photosynthesis. So we did the light reaction, we're now gonna do the Kelvin cycle. Now this kind of gets a little confusing and honestly, I wanna just go through, in chemistry we would call this the skeletal equation. It's just so you get the idea of what's happening, but then I'll go in and balance it all so that might actually help make a little more sense. But I kind of want you guys to understand the concept here. And on the test, I'm not gonna ask you to uh, regurgitate step by step what's happening here. And as you'll even know, I'm using my little cheat sheet as well. But I want you to understand the, the idea, the concept behind what's happening here. So we're gonna start with a five carbon sugar. And the name of that five carbon sugar is riboulose biphosphate. And we're gonna abbreviate that R-U-B-P. And your book will probably use that as well. We rarely see it written out in the full name. So RUBP is our, our starting point. And then we're going to go up here where we're gonna hook up. And again, that's what these circles are representing is the carbon. So we are going to bring carbon dioxide in. So we have one carbon here. And we're actually gonna use an enzyme which is really kind of important. And I talked about this enzyme in, in photorespiration in the PowerPoint. So this is that enzyme Rubisco, and Rubisco is going to take the RUVP, hold on to the CO2, and put it together. So then once it does that, now you're not gonna see this molecule that I'm gonna draw, but I'm gonna draw it up here just so you can kind of get an idea what's happening here. So notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So with my six carbon molecule, and I still have my two phosphates, we saw this molecule in glycolysis. So we went from five carbon, one carbon, to six carbon, and then that stress on that covalent bond is gonna end up breaking, and that is gonna give us our first product here, which is called phosphoglyceraldehyde, or we can call it PGA. I always remember that that first molecule off of uh, the Krebs cycle is PGA, and I think about the golfing, you know, Professional Golf Association, PGA. So that's what always reminds me what that molecule is. So then the next step that we're gonna do, because we notice we have, basically we cut this in half, so we're now in three. We are next going to take the ATP that we used, that we made, I should say, in, oops, wrong color, in um, the light reaction to phosphorylate this. And so I have this color. And I'm gonna leave a space in front of here because we're gonna balance this all out. So we take our ATP, we now have ADP. Where did we get the ATP? We got it from the light reaction. So if you have not had chemistry yet, we abbreviate reaction RXN, reaction. The next step we're going to, and these kind of sound or look like it's counterproductive. We put on the phosphates, we take off the phosphates. But again, what we're doing is we're changing the energy level of those molecules to make these chemical reactions happen much faster. And with the aid, remember each step will really kind of have an enzyme that's going to facilitate this process. And so now we're gonna take off our phosphates. Uh, we usually use a little letter I there for inorganic or independent. So basically saying it's by itself. So we have that independent phosphate group. We are also going to, in this step, more importantly, a couple things happen here, is we're going to take our NADPH and we're gonna drop off that hydrogen, NADP plus. And again, where did we get the NADPH? We got it from the light reaction. All right. So then the next step, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up going, and I'm gonna kind of draw this line like this. There is an exit point here, and I'm gonna draw that when we start to balance, but I'm gonna put my molecule. This is G, 
3p. I'm going to put my molecule over here. And like I said, when we balance, you'll understand what's happening here. Now, in a lot of your books, you might have multiple arrows here. And so what's happening is, I always call this the mystery box. We really haven't worked these steps out in this process yet. We just know multiple things happen. And during that time, we need additional ATPs in order to get back my RUVP. And again, where did we get the ATP? We got it from gonna do this. We got it from here, right? We got it from the light reaction. All right, so to balance this out, okay, so let me go through first of all what happened. So RUVP hooks up with carbon dioxide. We phosphorylate it with the energy from the light reaction. We are going to um, put the hydrogens on, because think about it, CO2 has carbon and oxygen. And we know that for each carbon in sugar, we have carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. So we still need our hydrogen. And this is where we're getting our hydrogen, right? With our, our formula, right? We wanna get to, we wanna make C6H12O6. So you guys should have that carbohydrate number in your head. So what we're gonna do here next is I'm gonna actually divide this up. So we could divide it up into a couple different phases. This phase here is often called the carbon fixation phase. So again, to fix carbon means we took inorganic carbon, right? Here's my inorganic carbon and we're turning it into organic carbon. We are fixing the molecule. The second part is called the reduction. Reduction of the sugar. Remember our oil rig reduction. Um, we have oxidation is lost, reduction is gained. And what are we doing? We are gaining our electron, right? Of course, that electron is in the way of hydrogen. And then some folks put this fourth phase. I like the fourth phase, and this is called exit of product. And then the last phase here is regeneration of our UVP. So if we balance this now, so if we balance this whole thing out, we're gonna start with our UVP. Now, with RUVP, we have three molecules of RUVP, which means I have a total of 15 carbon. Okay, so I have 15 carbon atoms here. I am going to not just take one carbon dioxide, but I'm going to take three. So that gives me three carbons, right? So when I add my 15 plus three, I'm gonna end up with 18 carbons. So basically what I'm saying is I would have three of these molecules, three of these six carbon, right? Three times six, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, that's 18. And I cut them in half. So when I cut them in half, I now am gonna have six molecules of PGA, right? Six times three, so it gives me my 18. Now, if I have six of these molecules, I'm gonna have to have six ATPs to put on one on each of those molecules. All right, that means I'm also gonna have to have six NADHs, six NADP pluses, and I'm gonna pull off six phosphates. Okay, so you can kind of see the, the uh, trend going on here. That means I have six G3Ps. Now, one of those molecule, one of the molecule is going to leave one G3P. So that's why we still have G3P here, but I'm back to five. And if I have five, I'm back to my 15 carbons. So here I lost three carbon. All right, so you can kind of see this. Three go in the top, 
three come out at the bottom. And now I'm back to my 15. I have that uh, regeneration of my RUBP, some reorganization. I have to add, we throw in three more ATPs and we get back our RUBP. Now, I haven't really talked about sugar yet and that is the important thing, right? So down here, where I have my G3P, that product there, my G3P, is going to be used to make my biological macromolecules. 